morning and welcome to Our Issues Milwaukee. I'm your host, Andrea Williams. February is Black History Month, a federally recognized nationwide celebration that calls on all Americans to reflect on the significant roles that African Americans have played in shaping U.S. history. It was created by historian Carter G. Woodson. During this half hour, we'll discuss upcoming events in honor of Black History Month, but first, I'd like to introduce you to a young leader who is the current president of Milwaukee's Youth Common Council a powerful and diverse group of young leaders committed to making a difference in Milwaukee. I'm happy to have join us Bria Smith, who represents Milwaukee's 6th District. Hi, Bria. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for being here. No problem. And the Milwaukee Youth Common Council works on issues that are important to youth and the members actually represent young people like yourself from mm -hmm. all the city's automatic districts. Talk about your role as president and how you first got interested in politics. Yeah, so I'd say that my role as president is very versatile. Um, I am the Milwaukee Youth Council president, so I do delegate different responsibilities and issues. And this year, I'm focused on restructuring the entire um, game of youth council. So I'm bringing in committees and having more youth engagement because a lot of like the youth on the council don't really aren't involved in shaping different policies and implementing different policies that are focused on youth. Mm -hmm. So within these committees, we can hit um, community organizing, violence within our streets, uh, healthcare, education, all these different things that kind of fit that foundation of youth empowerment. And I got involved in the Youth Council as well because I was recommended by Melilla Coggs because I did the Miss Juneteenth of 2017, which I won, and then she recommended me to be on the Youth Council. And it was, has been a really, really big uh, and opportunity for me because I've never really been in, in kind of like the person that was in favor of politics, uh -huh. but because I was able to go to the common, the city hall every day, sit in, the, in her seat and like up front have like little gavel and everything. It was really interesting to see like what youth can do when it comes to breaking different polarizations of youth being involved in politics and how we can reform the narrative that youth are kind of ap apathetic to politics mm -hmm. but kind of including the, vo the voice of youth. Yeah, and it's so important because mm -hmm. when you have uh, people who really don't live the lifestyle of teenagers mm -hmm. are really understand uh, some of the challenges that they face on a daily basis or even the things that they see, right. then it's hard for those people to shape the policy mm -hmm. or have input and you guys are able to do that. So uh, what would you say is the top priority amongst uh, the Youth Common Council right now? And what, what stands out to mm -hmm. you as the biggest issue or challenge? I know that 2019 was like the biggest year for, or 2000, end of 2018, the, the very revolutionary year to getting youth into these elected official seats. And I, I wanna keep that drive coming. I wanna have mm -hmm. civic engagement within classes and reminding youth in Milwaukee that you can make a difference. It doesn't matter like the, the, the age that you are, like what zip code you reside in, what color of your skin, and it's all perspective of how you wanna go out of your comfort zone and make a difference within our community. And with that, I, I would say that fuels my agenda, my youth mm -hmm. power agenda of like youth engagement, youth empowerment, that's just a foundation of different ideas. So if it's youth being involved in the, the military, youth being involved in like policing our, our communities, or youth being involved in going to the healthcare. So like having this kind of like structure of like encouraging youth, especially youth of color who live in our community, because that's like the highest community. Um, having these youth here understand that they have like the power and the value to reform our narratives and actually have policies that, uh, that they're, they're, ma they're making policies that affect them. Mm -hmm. So for the, our Youth of Power agenda, we have lots of different uh, policies or like focal points that we're topping, talking about. It's um, youth empowerment, it's youth getting into politics, it's youth in education, it, uh, like sitting on the school board and reminding them to do that, and youth um, in healthcare. So uh, if you wanna talk about mental health and stability and all these different taboos that kind of conf confine youth to like this one way of thinking. Mm -hmm. So just letting, especially Milwaukeeans and like young people my age, like 18 year olds, letting them know that you, we have a comfortable space and a foundation for them to make effective change if they're if they're supported by other youth, not just older people, but in closing the gaps between our generations and letting them know that young people are supporting other young people. Yeah, and uh, speaking of uh, members of the Youth Common Council, you guys have the opportunity to sit down and mm -hmm. meet with uh, the mayor, the mm -hmm. actual common council, uh, the school superintendent, and a long list of others from the community. So uh, you talked about uh, seeing young people mm -hmm. take on uh, these jobs as elected officials. Yeah. So that brings me to former youth common council president, oh, now state yeah. representative Kaylin Haywood II. Um, 
I'm guessing, I just assume that he serves as a great role model mm -hmm. to all of you because he's not only showing where focus can get you, but also that you can do anything you set your mind to despite your age, right? Most definitely. And I remember he came to our inauguration, and every time he comes, we stand and like, clap for him, like, yeah, like, you made history. And it's like, it's really cool to see like the intersection between what the youth council can produce and like the revolutionary people and young people that can be produced from the youth council because it mimics um, all the power that you can have once you graduate and you actually take on um, your 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 legacy of what you want to be and like Kaylin kind of resembles like that entire idea of like being in the youth council, understanding politics, and going through the same implementation of policies, and then graduating out of that and then actually taking the youngest ever in America as as a black <laughs> man. So it's like it shows like how you can make change in Milwaukee and no one like really knows like what Milwaukee is besides us so it doesn't really matter like what narrative like sticks you to what you're living yeah so. and I should mention for those who don't know he's 19 years <laughs> old it's amazing and you're pretty amazing yourself uh, you. you've spoken at the Women's March of Wisconsin mm -hmm. and you started your own website that gives young women a place to express their experiences with oppression so mm -hmm. tell us more about honey for your yeah so I could I created Honey for Your Tea last year, so it's going to be a baby in March, mm -hmm. one year. But um, <laughs> I started it because I do go to a predominantly white school, and I, there's a very small population of girls of color, just people of color in general, and I wanted to create a safe space for girls of color to be able to upload their stories if it's with discrimination, oppression, identity misrepresentation, and things that kind of we aren't given like this space to talk about because we're told to just like absorb it, move on, and just try to get a good job and do all these different things, but mm -hmm. you can't progress as an individual if you aren't addressing the things that are preventing you from doing that. So I thought it was really important, especially with my friends and I, to have this safe space. And I love writing and like literature and like blogging and <laughs> how I wanted to make something, this idea that would create a safe space for young girls and produce something that was beautiful such through writing. So I created the website, I released it and I made a guideline book of honey resembles, or the tea resembles like your bitter truth of being a, a young woman of color. So like what makes you you? Like if it's like racism, if it's like you don't understand who you are discrimination like those are your bitter truth that's your tea you know when someone tells you like spill the tea like yes. the truth about that. <laughs> so it's, it's bitter and it doesn't really have a good taste but you put the honey and the honey resembles self-love um, how you're able to love yourself have you able to have confidence and understand that you are who you are and that makes your your tea sweeter so your bitter truth a little more sweet to the taste, so look how you're able to accept it. I love that, <laughs> yes, and we're gonna put the uh, website address right mm -hmm. across the bottom mm -hmm. of the screen so people can check that out for sure, honeyforyourtea.com. Mm -hmm. And uh, you did mention uh, that you uh, work closely with 6th District Alderwoman Malele Cog. Mm -hmm. So uh, what have you been able to take away from her experience and the things that she is teaching you? I remember meeting, like having lunch with her and we had like our shadow day with like the the representatives of the youth council with the common council mm -hmm. and like just like watching her um, like own her space and like own like the room and like how she uses her voice as a platform for people within my district and a platform for like just women of color especially and like just watching her like own that space and own like her own narrative and own like her position really like paves the way for young girls especially in our community and I know she has girls day as well yeah. but one thing that she told me is to own my space and to always like know information to research and do all these different things so you're able to bring forth content and material not just yourself because like you can be credible and like your own stance but you need to have like a substantial amount of information to support that and so that was a really big takeaway that I took away from her and mm -hmm. I'm hoping that with like this new um, presidential election I can work closely with her so how we can unite all the districts and not just focus on the sixth district but like kind of like propel Milwaukee forward and the youth of Milwaukee as like one uniformed front. I love that mm -hmm. and so uh, when you talk about being able to own your space and you know realize that knowledge is power mm -hmm. you uh, had mentioned that going on a black college tour mm -hmm. really did something special for you and I'll mention that Alder Woman Cogs attended mm -hmm. Fisk University mm -hmm. and I attended HBCU Central yes. State University so yes. I was really um, excited <laughs> to know that just you visiting yeah. uh, an HBCU allowed you to walk away with something. Talk about what you in fact uh, gathered from that tour. Yeah, I remember being a part of 
Black Achievers, which is like mm -hmm. a, and rooted from YMCA. But we went on a black college tour, and like this is me as a freshman. Like I didn't really have a lot of black friends. Like I've never really <laughs> been around a black people for a while because because the school that I tend to. And I remember going to like Howard. No, we went down south. So we went to a bunch of like um, like TSU. Mm -hmm. Like we went to like Dillard, all these different places. And I was able to get like the southern feel of like the HBCU lifestyle and like oh, just yeah. be around like black students putting like their textbooks in their bag and eating soul food. And it was just like a really big <laughs> culture shock for me, mm -hmm. even though I did live in like second and center. But I went to school where it was so different. So mm -hmm. I didn't grow up in that atmosphere. And, like for me, I, I've always wanted, like because of that memory, made me want to like dive deeper into my community and like try to like be a part of like black succession and like uh, young people who are black as well and like be in that mist because I felt like I was missing that. And I talked a lot about that in my in my my blog as like a young girl of color. Like we're, when we're placed in situations we feel like we're not represented, we kind of like stray away from our identities and kind of adapt to like a different space. But That's I didn't want to do that. Like I yeah. wanted to. Like, you know, like, understand my roots and, like, know where I'm come from and, like, understand that black people do go to college and then we have HBCUs out there and, like, people are learning and they're having a great time. And that was a really good, like, culture shock for me to know that this is what I want to do. I want to advocate for people who feel the same way, like, who felt like they didn't have, like, a space that was comfortable or a space to call their own. So. Yeah, that's powerful stuff. And so uh, you have done your college tours <laughs> and you've kind of visited different schools and so I'm guessing you've probably made a decision on where you want to attend college once you graduate? Yes, so I did the entire HBCU spiel uh -huh. but I'm actually attending Emerson which is a film and journalism school in Boston. Amazing. I, yes, I'm really That's excited for that. School. Yes. So like to kind of, yeah, so the answer, the, I don't know if you asked the question yet but what I'm going to do later. Yeah, your um, goals yeah, for yes, the future. Yeah, you want to so. go to, you're going to Emerson. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what are your, what do you envision yourself doing uh, once you graduate from college? Yeah, so I've always been like a video kid and I love like film and I love like retelling stories through visual arts. And uh, I also talked about like me liking literature and writing. So I'm hoping to do journalism as well, but kind of like retelling stories from the different standpoints of people who are marginalized and overlooked and like robbed of expansive platforms. But how can I incorporate that through like film and showing it on a, like a visual spectrum and I'm excited to see what create creative things I can make mm -hmm. and still like having a, a people keep telling me like run for office one day so like hopefully <laughs> I can like incorporate that as well with like political journalism and like visual arts. So oh gosh I say to all of the young people who come here in the words of Oprah <laughs> your future is so bright it That's burns true. my eyes yes yeah. so you have so much to look forward to and to be able to really uh, experience all the things that you have up to this point mm -hmm. is uh, really a blessing and mm -hmm just getting started so yeah. all the best to you thank and you. continued success thank you thank you for coming today Bria Smith is the president of the Milwaukee Youth Common Council the council meets the second and fourth Wednesday of the month at City Hall and for more information on the Youth Common Council you can visit the website at city.milwaukee.gov when we return to our issues Milwaukee we'll switch our attention to a highly anticipated production that celebrates the rich heritage of African American history and culture we'll find out more about we are the drum right after this <music>